Hi guys, welcome to another video tutorial with me. In this video, we are continuing on in our series of um, the flower color guide um, florals. And the first video we did were focusing on the on getting some nice loose organic shapes for our petals and this was a butterfly ranunculus. The second one we did after uh, our Sunday Live where we did the ranunculus with larkspur also from a previous video. But part two was last week's the autumn anemone which is right here and then today we are going to be doing the dahlia and this is the dahlia that we are going to be adding as part three to this series. Once again, this is from a reference book and I am using the flower color guide. If you guys are interested in getting this book or any of the supplies I'm using here today, please check out the description below. All right, so again, we're doing the dahlia today. Really quickly, I'm gonna tell you guys what I am using for my supplies here today to do this painting. I'm using my Paul Rubens um, sketchbook, watercolor sketchbook. I'm using the Princeton Neptune line of round number six and number eight. I've got my 36 set of white knights. I've got water ready and some paper towel ready just in case I need to dab excess water or color. All right, and we are good to begin. So we're gonna start off by mixing some color and what I'm going to do is use my number six to start mixing and I'll be using the number eight to go in and spread some color once we start painting. So the colors I will use to get my nice, beautiful, dark wine tone happening there is going to be a combination of my Matter Lake Red and the violet and let's just see what we get when we do that so i've already got some matter lake red mixed on here so i'm just going to get some of that sorry not matter lake i've got some violet mixed here i'm going to get some of that matter lake and mix it in here with the violet and get that nice dark rich red and let's get a little bit more of that violet in here beautiful. So now I've got this nice gorgeous dark plum wine color I guess you could call it and we are ready to start our painting. So using the number six again I am going to go ahead and start doing little strokes. Now before we actually do it on the regular paper we will be um, just to loosen up, we're going to do these strokes on a practice sheet of paper. So here's my practice sheet. And what we want to do is get these nice, thin sort of strokes happening here. But again, with very organic flowing movement. So what I will do is just using the tip of my brush, making sure that I don't have water on it. So like rubbing it at the edge of wherever you're mixing your color and just going down onto my sheet and just starting to create these strokes in a circular fashion, okay? Because we want to try and mimic something like that. So pressing down, trailing off. Get a little bit more color. Move all that color down to the center. Notice how I'm kind of like wiggling my brush different directions, leaving some white space. Adding a little bit of extra strokes in the, here and there. And now for the center, because the center have has these smaller looking ones in there, it'll be nicer to get a slightly darker version of the purple, so the violet. So I got a little bit of that. And I'm just adding a couple of strokes in between here before this area section dries off. And again, I'm just lightly adding these strokes in and then we can revert back to our outer bits and continue painting this all around. Add a 
adding some at the bottom. And you have the reference image right here, so you know exactly what I'm trying to mimic. And again, we are not looking for perfection. We're looking for loose and pretty much like a version of these flowers. We're not looking for anything super realistic in terms of um, like photographic perfection. We want the colors to blend in. We're looking for beautiful, loose, and just satisfying for you to do. And so these are the strokes that you need to just repeat over and over again using the colors I've mentioned and just kind of allowing the, the colors to sort of speak for itself and the strokes to also kind of enhance the colors. Okay, so there we go. We've got our Dahlia. I prefer leaving it this light. You can absolutely mix more color in your color mixing and then go ahead and do this. So once again, really quickly to talk about these strokes, because you can see some of the edges are kind of folded and stuff. You don't have to mimic it exactly. You can be simplistic like this. So again, just using the tip of your brush, pressing down and kind of just getting that nice single long petal, right? That's what we want. Again, here's another one. Let's do it again. Notice how I'm using the tip to get that nice pointed tip and then pressing down on my brush. There we go, again. So feel free to use this time to practice these petals. And then once we're ready, we you can unpause this video and let's start painting the flower for real. For real in the sense on the good paper that we're going to be painting this on. Okay, so that's it in terms of getting our Dahlia practice on. Alright, so we're ready to begin and I've got some color mixed already. So I'm getting my color and we are starting by doing these cute little strokes like I mentioned. So we'll do the first flower here and pressing down, trailing off. You can dip the tip of your brush in water to get a slightly lighter version because we are gonna go a lot darker for the inside strokes. So I'll just get it slightly lighter for these ones. Thin strokes, multiplying um, on top of each other sort of situation. And you can do like the one dark stroke and then go lighter as we go around um, and then this way you get a nice gradient effect happening with your flower. I'm going to get some darker color right here and just add the lighter smaller little strokes inside. Dipping the tip of my brush in water I'm going to get some longer strokes happening on the outside. And again, like I mentioned, make sure you're getting some nice um, organic shapes by really pressing down your brush, using the tip of your brush to get like some nice thins, pressing down on your brush to get some nice thicks for your flower. And then just allowing this floral to kind of get its beauty not from perfection of painting, but more so from the looseness and the white space that you leave in between the petals and also the color, the variations of the color tones in it. I'm going to get a little bit more of that violet now, mix it in with what I have there and I want to tackle the center a little bit more. And at this point you will notice if you've got this book handy and you're actually referencing this book as you're painting with me, what you will notice is that there's a little bit of carmine sort of kind of peeking out. So if you want to add some of that carmine, we have not used our number eight as yet, so you can just get some of the carmine on it and maybe just add a couple of strokes of that happening 
here and there within the flower itself have it peeking out. This is why I like leaving more white space is always kind of nice because what you can do is now you could have just gone in and added a little bit of that carmine in with the white space in the center mainly because that's where I am seeing it. Or even in the strokes of the petals. Loving this Paul Rubens watercolor paper for this floral set because if I want to make it something that I can frame, it's going to look quite nice because the texture of this paper is gorgeous. Just adding a little bit of that carmine over here. Not pleased with that petal, so I was just trying to fix it. All right. Perfect, so that's that, and now we can move on to doing the um, the stem for this. I'm just gonna add one more petal here so it doesn't look too weird, like we've messed up this area. Cover it up a little bit, why not? It's what happens when you kind of overwork some stuff sometimes, and that's okay because you can always find creative ways to enhance. And uh, if you're noticing this, if your work has started to dry, you'll notice that some of them are looking a lot lighter. And now is the time you can go in and just get a slightly darker color and just kind of throw that in there. So this way it looks more layered and fuller. So the next thing we need to do is the stem. And for the stem, I like the idea of mixing some green along with some Mars Brown or Burnt Umber, whichever. So I'll take some yellowish green, mix it with Mars Brown likely. And so here we go. I've got a lot of that yellowish green because I told you guys I'm not a massive fan of it. And it usually tends to be quite full in comparison to a ton of other colors in my palette. There we go. So we've got this nice warm green happening. And again, using this brush, we're going to go ahead and start creating the stem. And it's pretty straight. So here we go. I do want to create that other flower next. So I'm going to go ahead and do dip the tip of my brush in water. Get a nice stem happening there. Get a darker tone for the very top there where it attaches to the flower and then go all the way down. I'm very light handed with the brush which is why every time I do a stem I have to go over it for the second time just to make sure that it's thick enough and that's perfect. I love how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and get some dark green mix that in to do our leaf and just add in some of that dark green over there at the top and maybe a little bit at the bottom. And here we go with the leaf. So adding this here. And then doing that one stroke, then getting water on my brush and I'm just doing that. And then doing a little bit of curvature on there. Mixing a little bit more of this darker hue. and then painting the other half of the leaf. And just like the flower, the dark and light colors of the, of the green we're using should be indicative of the details in the leaf. And that's what keeps things loose and light and fun without being super detailed. And that's that. So this is the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you are interested in purchasing this book and doing this series with me, it is listed in the description below. So feel free to check those links out. Same thing with all the supplies we're using here. 
When you do do your dahlia or any of the other florals that we've done, I would love to see it. So please do tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. My handles are also listed below. And last but not least, if you enjoy videos like this, please consider subscribing and liking this video and sharing it with people who might also like this. It really does help my channel grow and I can continue to create some pretty um, uh, creative, watercolor, easy, loose videos for you guys. So thanks again for watching guys and we'll chat soon. Bye.